Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, we're gonna see uh, the part three of our yeah. So the part three of our uh, one framework. So in this video, I'm gonna cover how we could add a new API test case. Um, yeah, and also cover some of the uh, important ways how I could refactor my code with using functional interface. Again, if you haven't uh, read about functional interfaces or Lambda expressions. I highly recommend to watch my playlist on Java 8, right? Without wasting a lot of time, let's get straight away uh, to the IntelliJ. Uh, yeah, maybe um, we will uh, see what is the API that we are working with. So the request.in is the uh, website where you could go and try out different uh, API calls. And for now, for this example, I want to use this put request, um, right? So this is the put request. I'm going to send a new body and it's going to give me a response like this and how we could write a test case for this, right? So even though I have a, uh, other dummy test cases where you could go and have a look at them, for example, this one uh, actually creates a new user. So we need to pass user details. And we once we get the uh, response, we will assert whether this is true or not one, whether the response can be deserialized to, uh, you know, this is kind of check that we can do to make sure that the schema is exactly matching. Um, and and we can also add other uh, associations like whether it has a key with a particular value in the response, whether, you know, these are all just an example how, uh, you know, how we could use all these methods that I have built. So there is a response, response asset class, uh, which you could make use of and, uh, you know, do all the common associations that we normally do. For example, status code association, uh, schema validations, uh, right? This is already all built. So you could directly use them and then, you know, um, write test in a much faster way. So similarly, you could, uh, um, you know, uh, get, you can make a get call to fetch the details of a particular user. For example, this user API class is where um, the uh, the logic uh, resides. For example, if you want to create a user, uh, we make, a, uh, we pass the body, we post, uh, we make a post call to this particular endpoint and stuff like that. So, um, you know, if you also want to make a put call, uh, you know, so let's let's do a API test again, guys. This API test is nothing but uh, a test tag. Uh, you know, the test and uh, sorry, the J unit annotation test along with the tag of API. So this is called as meta annotation. This can help quickly help you to you know um, avoid multiple lines of code. For example, instead of doing something uh, like this uh, and then void uh, uh, update user details. Right, and I can also add at the rate tag API. So this is the way how we could group test cases in, in JUnit 5. So instead of doing these two tags, I can simply create a meta tag like API test and then put it directly. So you don't have to worry about multiple tags, right? Good. So now let's go ahead and similarly create uh, um, the conventional way of how we can do things. Uh, let's say if you're not familiar with Java 8, how we could do this. So you can create a wrapper method here, update user. Um, and uh, if somebody is passing me and user ID similarly, and uh, what I want to do with that is return uh, given, right? And then uh, this also uses the same path param. So I'll just copy paste this whole stuff. Um, Let's go here, API user two, API user two. So the endpoints is all matching, so that's okay. So we copy it, but just change it to put, right? This is a put request. Um, notice this is a put request here, right? And then we also need to pass the body, right? So that's very important. So I will add a new one, that's body. And I need a body from somewhere and uh, that has to be of matching this user details, right? So name and job. So. I have to pass user details, user details, user details, right? So these are the two things that I need. Um, yeah, all good. Let's go here and uh, let's say user API dot get. So you update user and then let's pass, for example, two. And uh, the user details is something that uh, is already there. So yeah, so we, we could get the user details 
and this would give us the response back. Once we get the response, we simply want to do is um, assert that response uh, dot right. What is the status code? Uh, is two hundred. So let's go ahead and put two hundred here. Um, and then what else we want to validate? If you want to validate schemas and everything, you can do. Um, uh, you know, I can see has key with value of uh, one of the value that we passed. So I can say uh, name key should be there with the value of the user details dot get name, right? So that's how it is. And I can also re replicate this and use um, what is the other key? It's it's job, right? So uh, get job, right? Again, you can add schema validations and everything. Like, you know, you can create a schema file and you can use match a schema file, everything you can do. But if for simplicity reason, I'm just doing a couple of assertions and done. Now let's try to run the test and see how it works. Again, once this is done, uh, we will we will optimize this particular piece of code. Because for example, in the meantime, while it is running, so if you notice there are a lot of get requests like put, patch, delete, uh, post, a lot of things, right? So, so uh, if you if you are going to create a wrapper method for all of these inside your user API, it's going to be very, very big and uh, very hard to manage. So there is some failures. Let's see what it does. Expecting actual not to be null. Um, so I think there is a failure here. Okay. And the user test here a fail because I'm not sure if this user detail is being passed correctly. Let's go ahead. Okay, this is inside. It should basically do that. Um, or what I can do is you can simply create, uh, I just need a user details, right? So you can say user detail, user test data dot get user details. And this should give me user details one. And I could simply use it here. You know, for testing purpose, um, sorry guys, I've been coding with TypeScript, so I'm using a log instead of, uh, you know, sysout. So yeah, let's try this now, and uh, let's see if there is a problem in generating this test data. So I think this time the user details are getting generated, so surely it should pass. So it says some failure. Um, okay, this is changed. That's okay. API path parameters. So I pass in the body. It's all good. Name and job. Um, and then it's a put request. It's a made a put request. Let's do a, a pretty print before we. Okay, so now what I can do is can do a, a response start pretty print here to see uh, why it is failing. This is good. Like if something is failing, I can also show you how I would debug. Um, yeah, that's good. So guys, I normally don't prepare for my videos um, so that, you know, you could see me how I actually code instead of pre I preparing for 15, 20 minutes and then give you a very ideal video. I feel this is so guys, if you notice, um, I think it is, it is the response. It has the problems, right? Uh, they are telling, if you make a put call um, to API slash users slash this to a put call with the body, you would get 200 and this is the response. But in the response, it is not being displayed and that's the problem, right? So um, I think it is, a, it is a problem with the API. So, so we can simply remove these yeah so for now yeah uh, so i think we can run the test now yeah you should definitely pass and uh, we could remove all these things
Jesus. So this is how easily you could write a test. Um, for example, um, as I mentioned, we could optimize this particular user API class because every time we pass, uh, you know, we have to create one wrapper method here. Instead of all that, you can you can basically create a method. Um, if the problem here is if you put it at the high level, we pass different test data. Right. For another one, we have to pass different test data. So the similarly, the test data that we pass creates a lot of method combinations. Instead of that, we will leave the implementation to the user themselves. Right. So I will have a method called as execute. And you know, I will give them okay, request specification. Okay. Request specification. And I will return them the response. That's it. So now I can call it as user function. Uh, so let's say uh, return user function dot apply. And I can give them a basic set of request specification. For example, uh, this, uh, this um, API doesn't have an authentication, but in real world, you'll have authentication. So what I can do is I can create a, you know, uh, another method that basically gives me uh, for this, uh, this should be of request specification type. Um, and uh, what I can do is uh, get authenticated. For example, I handle all the authenticated here, right? Request specific specification. Um, and then I don't have to do anything here um, and simply return um, given dot, let's say, if you have an auth here, you can add auth uh, and then basic, uh, you can say for now empty strings. Uh, I do not know how we respond, but if you have common stuff like content type, uh, content type for JSON, uh, stuff like that, you can add all the stuff or you can name it as get default request specification. Uh, for example, I don't use auth here. If you use auth, you can name it as get default authenticated request specification whatever in this case I'll, I'll keep it very simple and then i say get default request specification that's it once this is done your method remains short and you use you give every control to the user themselves so what they do is instead of calling this okay instead of calling this what they have to do is user api dot execute now you have request specification with you you tell them what you want to do, uh, request specification dot, uh, you want to say uh, the path param is, is basically, uh, you know, all this stuff. Okay. And they would do all these things, right? So you don't have to do all this. That's the advantage. Okay, so let's close this. And the user ID, Yeah, and the user ID is basically um, that we know that is true, right? That's all. Once you get all these things, you will get a response back and that we call it as a response and you could use this. So this way, see that uh, we are giving the implementation. Hey, user, since there are a lot of implementation possible, I don't want you to pass the data. Instead, pass me the implementation and, and this will do everything for you. And let's try to run the test. Again, the biggest advantage is the test, you know, your code will not execute here. Um, you know, it will be lazily executed when it calls the apply function. So this way, uh, you know, if you can have just one execute method um, for which you cannot create a combination and people can directly use this. Uh, sometimes the readability is, is gone for a task, uh, but again, we have to compromise a little bit for the speed and ease with which we can create this, all this code, right? Um, uh, sorry guys, this is the old man. I think the test got passed. Yeah, you can see it here. So I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, Tata bye bye.